Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to That Art Prof. Today I'm going to go over the supply list that you're going to need to begin your watercolor journey. In addition to your regular everyday supplies such as pencils, uh, a sketchbook, you know, ruler, etc. I'm going to go over the specific supplies that you might not be familiar with. To begin with, you're going to need a set of watercolor. They come in tubes. 10 milliliter tubes is a great place to start. Um, you can find them in packs of about 12 to 18. These are concentrated watercolor that you'll mix, obviously, with water. And this is the brand Reeves. I find it to be a good student grade brand. Uh, you want it, you can obviously get more expensive if it's something you decide to pursue down the line. Um, but I would kind of stay away from your typical store brands as they tend um, sometimes to be a little bit more waxy in nature and not give you um, quite the ability that you need. But here's the concentrated pigment that you just use a little bit at a time. The next thing that you're going to need is a set of brushes. You can find an inexpensive set like this for around $5. It's about 10 brushes and is a good assortment of flats and rounds and in different sizes that you're going to need. In addition to kind of that basic pack, there's a two or three specific brushes that we'll be using throughout the course. One of them is a wash brush and it looks like this. It kind of has, um, is very, like fluffy, it holds a lot of water, and you'll want to look for this. This is a kind of is called like a size three, and it's again is a wash brush. This is a glazing brush, it's one inch in the width, and a glazing brush is used quite often as well. And you won't find these in your traditional packs, that's why I'm kind of pointing these out separately. And the last brush that you're going to need in addition to those is called a script brush or a rigger. And it just has an extra long uh, tip for the bristles and is used for detail and that sort of thing. The next item that we're going to need, obviously, is a palette, a place to hold your paint while you're getting going. I like to use the sealable one right here. Um, you know, you can find any of them um, that range in price anywhere from, you know, like $10, you know, and up. Um, but this is a great a little palette to get started. You can take it with you and it also has, uh, you know, an assortment of wells and and some smaller wells to put your paints in as well as some larger ones to do some mixing. And this part comes out for additional mixing in either of these two areas. The next item that you're going to need is a block of watercolor paper. The paper is really important when choosing watercolors. Um, Traditional like copy paper and stuff is not going to hold the paint that you need. This is a you know a block of watercolor paper that I have here. Uh, you know, depending on the lighting, you might be able to see that there's an actual tooth to the paper. And you're gonna look for a block. This is 11 inches by 15 inches, which is a great size to get started. And you're gonna notice that this says 140 pounds. The pounds are important. You want to make sure you have a minimum of 140 pounds. That means the thickness of the paper, uh, which is just according to the ream. If once with a whole ream of this paper, it will weigh 140 pounds, which is where they get that from. The next thing that you're going to need is some masking fluid. It comes in a small container like this, this particular Windsor Newton brand. Um, and it's about um, two and a half ounces and um, and again, you can find it in other in other brands, not just this one. And it probably runs you around eight dollars, ten dollars, somewhere in there. And obviously, you're going to need to protect your surface. So what I use to protect my surface is just this piece of uh, it's called masonite. And I'm going to lift this for you slightly here, so you can see um, like the edge of it. Um, you can find it at any kind of home improvement store. They might cut you a piece. It comes in very large sheets, but they can cut you a small piece, you know, for, for just, you know, a minimal amount of money, you know, uh, five, ten dollars somewhere in there. But you can get a number of pieces off of it. And I just usually put it down to protect my work surface because it is, you know, the paints, um, they, you know, do stain some of the you know, colors more than others. Uh, but you just want to make sure that whatever you're working on you're able to protect that surface and it helps also when we um, will tape be taping our paper down to keep it flat during the drying process so that it doesn't uh, buckle up on you. 
Um, the last thing that you probably want is, you know, a portfolio or something to store your artwork in when you're done. Uh, when you're done creating them to kind of keep them safe. Um, sometimes leaving them out, can, again, they can buckle or warp if left out. Um, also, the la um, I just I did want to quickly mention, you might want to try some sea sponges. We'll be using those later on as we move into more of our texture units, but they're a really helpful tool. And that's about it. Everything else that's on our list, you should, again, should be familiar with. You know, you'll need a water bucket and some paper towels. You'll need some scissors and an X-Acto knife. So I hope that you'll be able to find all the supplies that you need to get started. And once you do, please turn in to my next video. Let's get started.